it was at the police station in deep. So, in other words, is now contradicting what Mr. Ramosefil earlier said that the state that accused number one was forced to sign the statement in an office. Uh, but here, Mr. Mgomezulu says it was not in an office. It was at the police station in, in, um, in, in deep blue. Yeah, I'm because I think it was Adam Brady that uh, when he was being so assaulted inside yes. Maboto's office, the Maboto came in and the assault stopped yes. inside the office. Yes. And that is where this document was signed. That was the initial version, inside the office. Subsequently, of course, yes. it appears it was signed, signed outside yes. of the office. Yes, I, I, indeed, my lord. Um, then page 37. Uh, Mr. Mgomezulu says uh, um, the first line, not deep proof of confused accusation number one, my lord, uh, I beg your pardon. Um, so the statement was brought into Rapari's office, Mr. Mgomezulu, that is correct. Um, or, what, or it was just in the police station. Then Mr. Mgomezulu responded, it was in the police station. Then the court asked him where everybody just moves and goes about. And Mr. Mgumazulu responded, moves? Yes. And the court said, uh, is that so not in the office? Then Mr. Mgumazulu said, not in the office. Uh, so this just buttresses the point that we've made earlier on that is contradicting directly what Mr. Ramosepili put to, yeah. to, 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 to the witnesses. Um, and we further mentioned that um, this is in direct contrast with the evidence of accused number two Um, that the statement was partially signed, and the, but this is, a, this is a different matter, my lord. We will come to that. This okay. refers to accuse number two. Um, then paragraph 10.15, the following is a version that was put to Constable Butelezi uh, regarding the alleged assault on the 19th of June, 2020. Uh, but accused number two made a complete volte facie, um, alleging that it happened on the 18th of June 2020 and no longer on the 18th of June after AVL evidence was led and the locations which he alleged, alleged that the assault took place did not appear on the AVL for the 19th. And we are going to quote extensively um, regarding th those uh, um, allegations or the ver uh, regarding that version. Uh, Mr. Mgomezuli, okay, let me just put the version of accused two because your testimony relating to the incident occurred on the 19th is that much limited in terms of the evidence given by the previous witnesses. And it says, accused number two was arrested on 16 June 2020. It was a holiday. Then Mr. Gomazulu, um, I will concentrate on the version where you were involved, according to him. Accused two was in the company of Sergeants Mohola and Mukhani and Sergeant Mabena, they were traveling with the white Toyota Fortuna. Can you remember that? Then, Consul Butelezi, I know the Fortuna, but who was inside the Fortuna, I do not know. Um, then, Mr. Mgomezuli, did you see the Fortuna on the day? Consul Butelezi, yes. I was clearing the way for it. 
um, from where to where, from the N12 to Moroga, from Moroga to Fosloris, then Mustam um, Gumezilu. N12, does it pass through Alberton or does it, uh, or is it a freeway alongside Alberton? Yeah. Constable Telezi, it is outside Alberton. Mr. Gomezulu, so Akis too was traveling with Sergeant Mohani and Sergeant Mabena when they stopped next to a garage, a finish station. Constable Telezi, I was not there. That Mr. Gomezulu, that is where he alleges that is where a call was made. Uh, he said, let me put it this way, after a telephonic conversation with somebody, he did not know who he was, suddenly you and Mapumulo appeared. Um, then Constable Butelezis answered, well, for starters, there's no garage on the N12. Then Mr. Mgumezulu, um, I will give description of the place where the garage was or on the way the garage is, if you are driving from N3, from N3, from First Lorest towards Johannesburg, the first off-ramp is Spread View, the second off-ramp is Alberton, there is a bridge, railway bridge, after the railway bridge there is an engine garage on the left-hand side. According to the description of access number two, in terms of that place, it is the area around the garage. Can you say something about that? Then Constable Butelezi, I will not be able to comment because I did not know what you are talking about. Then um, Mr. Mgomezilo, on that particular route, there is a board indicating Alberton, the direction towards Alberton. That garage that I'm referring to is along that road. It is on the side. There is where you arrived with Constable Mapumulo. You were traveling in a white bucky. Um, we'll just keep the um, rest of the evidence and go to page 39. Sorry, but just the defense will also have to elaborate on that. As I understood or listened to the evidence, this garage, it's next to the road. Yes. According to the evidence I listened to, there's a cafe at that garage. Yes, indeed, my lord. There are seats for patrons of the garage who sit around the surface of that garage. Yes. There are petrol tanks in this area where people were buying gas tanks. So it means... <laughs> There was a movement of people there. Yes. They're yes. buying in the cafe, they're yes. buying the petrol, they're sitting there as patrons of the cafe there. Yes. And yes. Some are putting petrol in, although he says mm. they didn't go towards the petrol tanks, but some are putting gas in because he said some people were carrying gas tanks. Yes. So there was movement there. And, and there's also staff. Yeah, know, of course. Of, the staff of, of the garage of, also. Of the garage um, who would have. Uh, uh, and these stupid this. police, they commence with the assault yes. in the presence of all this movement yes. of people. Yes, it, it, the defense has got to address me on that because yes. maybe I don't see the possibilities yes. which they see. Uh, indeed, my lord. Then on, on, on page 39, um, Mr. Mgomezulu, there in the middle of uh, the page, Mr. Mgomezulu. You are referring on the day of the 19th. Oh, okay. Then, Mr. Butelezi, I think that is the day that you are discussing. Then he says, let us proceed. You then proceeded, all of you, with all these three cars, you proceeded to another place next to a dumping area towards Alberton. So, here, my lord, um, Mr. Mgomezulu uh, draws the attention of Constable Butelis that the discussion is about the 19th um, and, and he's trying to verify from Constable Butelis as to whether the evidence that he's referring to occurred on the 19th 
and Constable Patelezi says, I think that is the day that you are discussing. Um, sorry. So, yes. sorry, sorry. But that day, Mr. Ngobe Zulu, didn't he correct it to say, no, actually, my instructions are that the assault in the dumping site was on such and such a date? Um, I, I, I couldn't, not before the availability of the AVL. Yeah, yeah, I know that, because yes. this apparently yes. changed the picture, according to you. Yes, no, I, I, I couldn't find a place where um, he, he corrects uh, the, uh, the date or not. Because I recall Mr. Dupree was pertinently also asked to come with the records of the 18th and the 19th. Is that y not so? Yes, indeed, and, and, and he did testify about this, the movement of the vehicle on the and 18th. On the 18th, he said the movement, I mean, the car was, the, the, it was just standing. Yes, at the garage. At the from, garage. Yes, there was no about, movement. Yes, from about 10 to 7. Up to the following until day. just after mid, midnight, midnight the following day. Yeah, so, well, you can't have it both ways, I suppose. Yes. If the AVL says there was no movement on the 18th, then maybe the car, and I'm not making any conclusions. This is just uh, submissions which I want to understand. Then it means if the AVL says there was no movement of the vehicle into the dumping site, that must correlate with what actually alleged to have happened at the dumping site. Are you with me? Um, I, I, I'm not quite with you on that point, Malo. Look, if the AVL says there was no movement on the 18th. Yes. And then the alleged assault, according to Mr. Mbouzou's oh, instructions, yes. Yes. happened on the 18th. Yes. Then this contradictory yes. evidence, if it is, cancels out mutually destructive of each version. Yes, well, um, uh, as I understand them, when the version now was uh, adapted to the 18th, they said when the um, vehicle moved to, um, to that point where it was stationary, um, that's, that's when the, um, they stopped at the dumping site where the, uh, where, where, where the assault took place. But uh, as you mentioned, Malo, that uh, artist number two is... is, is but he's simply doing just trimming his uh, uh, his sails according to um, the wind, and the, the the second version of the incident of the 18th is completely in, in contrast with what was initially put that the incident happened on the uh, on the 19th. Mm. Uh, and, and we submit, my lord, that just on the basis of that, his version ought. Um, to be um, rejected. Then on page 40, um, Mr. Mgumezulu, the, um, the fourth line from the top says, so one of the members was in possession of a container which contained water, which was poured. This water was poured in the front body of accused number two. And he says there was a small device that was to electrocute a case number two. And further on in the middle of the page, we mentioned that Mr. Mgomazulu says a case two was bleeding from the nose. And Brigadier Gininda then appeared uh, on the scene. He came out with documents. And it is further said that there was a gentleman uh, who was wearing uh, braces, and Constable Butelezi said, I did not meet the brigadier and Sergeant Mohola or the other man that was um, wearing braces on that particular day, that is now the 19th. Um, then there's a discussion about this gentleman who was uh, wearing uh, braces. Then on page 41, um, the second line from the top, 
cross examination by Mr. Mgumezulu continues. He says, um, from Alberton, from that area, the accused was transported by Sergeant Mohani and Sergeant Mabena. They passed Chris Hani um, Hospital. So once again, this clearly demonstrates that he is referring to the nine to the nineteen. I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, to the nineteen. Because it's happening contemporaneously with what happened at the yes. jumping site. Yes. And he then uh, says Colonel Rapadu was inside the hospital and he gave the keys to his wife. Um, then in the middle of the page, Mr. Mgumizulu, they went to Orlando. They proceeded to Orlando where they parked next to a dumping area. The accused also noticed the ATM machines that were no longer in use. Then in the middle of the page, Mr. Mgumizulu, then he took out some documents. Um, this is um, after the arrival of Brigadier Gininda with his wife's BMW. It says he opened the boot and sat on the edge of the boot. It says he then took out some documents and gave them to Colonel Rapadu for accused number two to forcefully sign the document. And the same version uh, of the assault on the 19th of June 2020 was put to Sergeant Mohani. Uh, Mr. Mgomizulu put the following version, Mr. Mgomizulu. And we quote, accused will come and tell the court that on the 19th, on the date of the alleged confession, he was taken, he was assaulted by the Metro Police officers, including Mabena, who was in, 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 in your company. Uh, so once again, um, this becomes clear that um, the alleged assault, according to the version, happened on the, on the 19th. Then uh, in the middle of the page, uh, Mr. Mgomizuli, yes, it is my instruction that as he was transported a car parked next to a certain filling station, he saw a board reflecting Alberton, um, and then Mr. Mukhani, uh, obviously taken aback by all these allegations, he asks, I want an explanation of whether it was when we were still on our way to Morocco. Then Mr. Mgumizulu responds, this is the version of the accused. Uh, you, you cannot pose questions uh, to me. Then on page 42, um, in, the, in the middle of uh, the page, Mr. Mgumizulu, then you immediately after that you actually moved no, no, maybe just before that, in the middle of uh, the page, accused was taken out of the motor vehicle. The daughter Fortuna and brought to the motor vehicle that was driven by Jonathan. He was put, he was seated at the back right side of the motor vehicle of Jonathan. And Sergeant Mabena on the left hand side. Um, Constable Butelezi was next to the accused, and the, the accused could not open the door um, on the right back. Um, and the version then continues in the middle of the page. He says, Mr. Mgomenzulu says, from that place, they, they then went to a dumping area on the way to Alberton. And Mr. Mukhani testify that he disputes that because he does not remember them passing a dumping area. And Mr. Mgomezulu says all the cars stop at the area. Uh, and he says at this particular area there are stairs, steel stairs with uh, steel poles. And the handcuffs were taken off from the hands of uh, accused number two. Um, it says he was handcuffed from behind. Um, his one hand was loosened. 
and the other handcuff was put on the steel on the steel pipe. And in the middle of the page, um, Mr. M M Sergeant Mukhani answers as follows, Mr. Mgomezulu, I still ask you to ask him, that is our case number two, to tell you the truth. Because all of this is not true. The BMW that you are referring to is a new model. It is not a 2020 model. It is the latest BMW. We are not using We are not or we are not using it um, and Brigadier Geninda never came close. Um, then Mr. Mgomezulu says uh, when during the course of the assault and torturing there is a device that was also used Accused two was poured with water from his front part um, of his body, and he was electrocuted by Mabena, Jonathan, and uh, Butelezi. And Mr. Mkomezuri says, when the plastic was removed, accused was bleeding um, from his nose. And he put it to Mohani that he did not participate in the uh, assault. Then, in the middle of the page, Sergeant Mohani answers Mr. Mgumezulu, I do not know how to explain this, but the accused person was not assaulted. He was not taken out because I would not allow it, and he must tell you the truth. He must not tell you lies because this is now impacting on your dignity. You are a very dignified person. You must not pray it and say that because we never stopped anywhere, um, then um, Mr. Mgomezulu said, let, then, let me then proceed to carry the mandate by giving you the version of accuse number two. Uh, Mr. Mgomezulu says, um, that shortly thereafter, um, accused number two was then uh, loosened. That is when they drove to Soweto. Then Sergeant Mohani says, I'm still refusing, saying that we never stopped anyway. Said Mr. Mgomezuli then says, You, Mabena, and accused two uh, drove to Chris Ani Baragwana, where you met Colonel uh, Rapadu, and he says, uh, I'm disputing that. Then on page 44, Mr. Mgomizulu says, It is my instruction that you drove with Colonel Rapadu to Orlando and you parked at an open area next to ATM that are no longer functioning. So this is what we submit. This PA is coupling the assault with. Um, the fact that uh, Lieutenant Colonel Rapadu was um, picked up at Orlando and that they then proceeded to, to um, Orlando at the um, disused um, ATMs. And as, you correctly put, as, as we pointed out, my Lord, that they are now saying that the incident happened on the 18th and no longer on the on the 19th. But here, my Lord, we submit that um, clearly the assault is um, coupled with the 19th, and um, <coughs> it is further mentioned that they went to um, Orlando. They parked at an open area next to the ATMs that are no longer functioning, and accused was then taken out of the motor vehicle and the assault continued and Brigadier Gininda then arrived with Sergeant Mohola and Mr. Mgomezuli then says you gave these documents um, 
there is now Brigadier Gininda. The Brigadier Gininda gave these documents to Colonel Rapadu, and this is when Akis was forced to sign those documents. And Mr. Mgumizuri then says there were documents or there were pages <coughs> that were not stamped with his thumb, and as a result, they were completed at Moroka Police Station. Um, this Malot, we submit that um, it is indicative of the fact that um, the accused changed his version um, as regards the uh, day of the alleged assault when the AVL were presented. He adapted his version to try and, and, and suit the locations where the incidents are alleged to um, have happened. Then paragraph 10.17 regarding the confession that was made to Ms. Cronier on the 24th of June 2020. Um, we indicate the basis um, that was laid by Mr. Ramosepeli when challenging the uh, admissibility of the statement. It says uh, the statement had been obtained under duress that the deponent did not sign the statement. <laughs> then at, Mr. Ramosipil also mentioned that it was not made freely uh, and voluntarily. Um, at paragraph 10.18 on page 45, we mentioned that the same proposition was put to Constable Lizarin by Mr. Mgomizulu. And we quote, if accused number two had to tell the court that inside room two, where the alleged confession was to take place, he did not sign any document, would you disagree with that version? And he, Mr. Mgomezilo continues, if he says he was taken to Jamestown, next an industrial area where the assault continued, and that is when he was ordered to sign the papers, and it is my instruction that you were also present when he was forced to sign the documents. Uh, Mr. Lizarin, my Lord, I can confirm that Mr. Mgomezilo client is lying to him. He's not telling the truth. He was never taken to Jamestown. He was taken straight to Moot um, subs from from Boxback. Then, um, paragraph 10.19, we mentioned, uh, we make the submission that strange is the fact that when accused number two testified, he conceded to signing the confession statement in Ms. Cronier's presence after borrowing a pen from the interpreter as she had testified, albeit according to accused number two, um, he signed to signify that he asked for toiletries. Um, he says he only initialed the statement when assaulted near an open area in Jamestown. So once again, this is uh, accused number two dis disputes the uh, version that was put uh, that, um, that he did not sign any document there in room two um, in the presence of uh, Mrs. Cronier. Then, my Lord, we deal with uh, the summary of uh, the state uh, uh, submissions. And, and maybe before we get to that, um, it was put to Brigadier Gininda that he promised a sum of um, three million to um, accused number two to implicate the um, the other persons. Um, it was initially said this um, um, happened on the uh, on the twenty uh, first. Um, where he was uh, um, incarcerated. At, 
at Primrose. And this was later changed to say that it happened in, in Pretoria. Uh, so there were two versions. Yes, the, 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 first, the yes. first bribe was elicited at Primrose. At Primrose. And then it was then changed to say um, it was in, 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 in Pretoria. And this came right during the stage when um, Brigadier Gininda was, uh, was testifying. It was never put to, um, to any person. Mm -hmm. um, and on the, on the 21st, when, the, um, when Brigadier Gininda was said to have elicited the bribe, accused was, inca was um, incarcerated at um, Primrose and, and, and not, and not Pretoria. Pretoria. And Brigadier Gininda mentioned that he doesn't even have the budget for um, that, that kind of money. And that at that point, um, on, on the 21st, accused number one had already made the confession to Lieutenant Colonel Rapaju. And why would he then still uh, make this ridiculous promise, uh, if one can put it that way, um, to accused number two? We, we, we submit that this wild allegation um, ought to be um, rejected. Then at paragraph 11.1, .1, we deal with uh, the summary of the state submissions. We point out, my Lord, that in a nutshell, the defense case regarding the statements made by the two accused is that the police came with the statements that were already prepared and they were coerced to sign them by being assaulted. And initially, the allegation of assault was the only ground upon which accused number one and two challenged the admissibility of the statement. But as we mentioned yesterday, that they are now also saying that their rights were not explained um, to them. And the Submission, my Lord, is that if the, only, if the only ground on which they challenged the assault, uh, the, the statement was uh, on the basis of assault, if the evidence indicates that there was no such assault, then that would mean the, the whole version must fall flat, uh, uh, my Lord. And... Uh, but now that they brought in this other issue of um, the rights not being explained to them, we submit that even if that is brought into the equation, uh, the evidence that is before court um, show that the accused rights were explained to them um, at, 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 at every turn. Now, just coming back to the issue of the assault, um, at 11, paragraph 11.2 for accused number one the following particulars of the assaults were put in record he was assaulted after his arrest on 30 May 2020 at Litabong in Tembisa at Fosloris near the court building and at Diplouf uh, Mr. Ramosipili put it as follows. Now on the assault, accused number one instructs me that he was slept, but mainly the torture was a clear plastic bag that was placed and covered his face, his eyes, his ears, his nose and mouth, and it was pulled by a person behind, whilst the other police officers held him and they smothered and suffocated him so that he could not breathe. Then, regarding the pointings out, Mr. Mgomezulu put the following version to Lieutenant Colonel Hadebe. Uh, so, you further not dispute the fact that from Vilera to Fort Flores, 
he was assaulted and back to Alberton, you cannot dispute that. So in other words, um, they are saying before the point is out, whilst en route from Valeria, um, what Mr. Mgumezulu says, first Lores, that um, he was assaulted, and he says back to Alberton, you cannot dispute it. Um, then in this regard, my Lord, we make the following submissions. Number one, there is no iota of evidence that accused number one sustained any injuries as a result of this sustained and severe assault. As Lieutenant Colonel Mboto put it, um, who, as we've mentioned, is a very seasoned senior police officer, says they cannot assault a person three times and then he comes to the office walking. That is not true, my Lord. I want to deny that again. Based on those facts, the gentleman was going to come by an ambulance if he was assaulted three times, three places like that. That is not true. The second point that we want to make is that the extract of the occurrence book of Villera Police Station Exhibit NN and Alberton Police Station Exhibit KK show that the accused had no injuries. The third submission is that extracts of the occurrence book from Deep Blue Police Station also indicate that accused number one had no injuries. Um, except, as you mentioned, my Lord, for the fact that um, there was these marks on the wrist due to the tight handcuffs, and Colonel Mboto testified that he had to loosen the um, handcuffs um, a bit. Um, the fourth submission in this regard, we mentioned that both Lieutenant Colonel Mboto and Lieutenant Colonel Hadebe uh, very seasoned commission officers saw no injuries on accused number one. And the fact that uh, we also make the submission, my lord, that uh, Lieutenant Colonel Hadebe made accused number one um, to disrobe from, um, the, um, from the waist upwards. And photos were also uh, taken, and there were no visible injuries. Paragraph 11.5, in so far as accused number two is concerned, he says the assault took the following form, um, as put by Mr. Mgomizulu on record. Accused will come and tell the court that on the 19th, on the date the alleged confession was taken, he was assaulted by the Metro Police officers, including Mabena, who was in your company, the Metro Police officers, then he said, sorry, who was present was Butelezi, Jonathan, and Mr. Mabena, who were involved in the assault and uh, torturing and tubing of accused number two. Um, then he went on, when during the course of the assault and torturing, there's a device that was also used, accused two was poured with water, um, from, his, from the front part of his body. He was also electrocuted. He says one of the members had a container which contained water, which was poured. This water was poured in the front body of uh, uh, accused number two. Um, then on page... Um, 47, we'll, we'll go straight to um, the, the, that sentence before paragraph 11.6, Mr. Mgumizulu. Um, oh, just before that, uh, there's a paragraph in bold that reads, Mr. Mgumizulu, then you had a discussion with Brigadier Gininda. Uh, he said, before I put the version, during the course of tubing and assaulting, I choose two was bleeding from his nose. 
then Mr. Mgumezuli, okay, accused too after he was beaten, tortured, and choked with a plastic bag. Then paragraph 11.6, when Mr. Mgumezulu set out the grounds on which the statement to Lieutenant Colonel Rapado has been challenged, he said the following, Mr. Mgumezulu, it is my instruction that the grounds upon which uh, and, and the rest of the, um, uh, his submission is inaudible, then um, the court asks him, yes, you may proceed, Mr. Mgomizulu. Um, it is that the accused was forced to make a confession. And the court says, you are saying he was forced to make a confession. Then Mr. Mgomizulu replies, that is correct, my Lord. He was assaulted in the presence of the witness that is coming to testify. Uh, as we mentioned that um, during the evidence of... Uh, uh, Colonel Hadebe, it was rectified that, that the assault stopped when Colonel Rapadu entered the room. Um, but the fact of the matter is that this is on record. Paragraph 11.7, Mr. Ramosipili set out the grounds for attacking the admissibility as follows, um, that he was arrested on the, that is now case number two, he was arrested on the 16th of June 2020, um, and he was assaulted from the 19th of June um, 2020 until he appeared in court. Mm. Paragraph. I'm sorry, my lord. No, no. Oh, okay. Paragraph 11.8. It is submitted that there is a major contradiction as to the date of the alleged assault of accused number two. Mr. Ramos Sipili said the assault commenced on the 19th of June 2020 when he set out the grounds on which the admissibility of the statements um, would be challenged as demonstrated above. However, the version put by Mr. Mgomizuri to Constable Utelezi and Sergeant Mukhani was that the alleged assault took place on the 19th of June 2020. And strange is the fact that after the AVL records were obtained and those locations at which the alleged assaults took place um, did not appear thereon, um, there was an about turn uh, on, on, on the alleged assault and it was then uh, alleged that the uh, assault took place on the 18th of June 2020 to align the version to the uh, AVL. Um, and we argue, my Lord, that this simply shows the untruthfulness of the version um, of uh, the accused. Then paragraph 11.9, uh, Mr. Ramusipili stated that the uh, assault commenced on the 19th of June 2020 when, according to accused number two, the assaults commenced on the 16th of June 2020 already, uh, when he was slapped, according to him, for asking Sergeant Mohani to produce his identification certificate at his room in Puking, and he was then told that he's being uh, presumptuous. Um, paragraph 11.10. It was initially put to Mrs. Cronier that um, accused number two did not sign the confession in her presence, but the accused himself contradicted this propos proposition in his evidence and testified that he did sign, although um, he says it was to show that he asked for toiletries. Um, then paragraph 11.11. .11. Ms. Cronier testified that the statement of accused number two was handed to the head of office, Mrs. Dupree, after the parties had left the office. The question that arises is how would accused number two have appended his uh, initials to uh, the statement there um, near the dumping area where he alleges that he was assaulted if the statement was in the position of Mrs. Dupree and not in the position of the police. Um, paragraph 11.2, uh, 
Accused number two alleges that the statement would have been blood stained as a result of the injuries. However, Exhibit JJ, uh, his confession statement had no blood stains on it. Uh, paragraph 11.3, Dr. Chokwe carried out a dental examination of accused number two on the 22nd of June 2020 and could not detect any injuries on him. Uh, and incidentally, the accused mentioned that he had a heart condition, which he also mentioned to Mrs. Grenier. And we submit, my Lord, that this shows the veracity of uh, their evidence. Paragraph 11.14, extracts of the occurrence books of the police stations where the accused was detained, uh, Exhibit MM of Pretoria North uh, Police Station for um, accused number two, um, Exhibit PP from Pukeng Police Station, Exhibit QQ from Primrose Police Station, and Exhibit SS um, from Pretoria Mood, the two three Pretoria Mood police station, show no injuries, which the accused himself now concedes in his head. Uh, paragraph 11.15, um, he testified that his t shirt and vest had blood stains when he, uh, this is now accused number two, he testified that his t shirt and vest had blood stains when he appeared before Lieutenant Colonel Rapadu on the 19th of June 2020. However, strange is the fact that he does not show uh, Colonel Rapadu this uh, blood stained clothes. This would have been the best exhibit to confirm the assault, and as Lieutenant Colonel Rapadu testified, he would have not continued with the taking down of the confession, but would have referred him for medical examination and advised him to, um, to open a charge. Paragraph 11.16. Um, no single docket was opened by any of the accused for the um, alleged assault. And then paragraph 11.17. Uh, both accused alleged that the statements were already prepared when the police forced them to append their signatures on those statements without knowing what the contents of those statements were. The question that arises is why would the police officers take the risk of presenting statements before court that the accused did not know um, sorry that the accused did not know the contents thereof and we submit my lord that this is improbable and we mentioned that it is also a strange coincidence that the version of both accused is identical uh, on, on, on the score paragraph 11.18 the white BMW 320i sedan that allegedly appeared on the scene of assault on the 19th of June 2020, where in Brigadier Gininda, Sergeant Mohola and a man with braces were said to be traveling in, um, was not yet acquired in 2020. And we argue, my Lord, that this demonstrates the falsity of the version of accused number two. Then paragraph 11.19. We mentioned that the AVL records support the version of the investigating team about all the places that they visited with accused during the course of their investigation, starting with uh, accused number one on the 31st of May 2020, when he took them to Palm Ridge to point out a traditional healer. On the 18th of June 2020, when they visited Caltonville at Sibanya Steel Water to verify the alibi of accused number two. On the 19th of June 2020, when they took accused number two to Moroka Police Station for the taking down 
of his confession by Lieutenant Colonel Rapadu and then proceeded to Foslores and back to Moroka police station and then to Puking and Primrose the trip to Primrose occurred in the early hours of the uh, 20th of June 2020 and they arrived there at about 4.30 in the morning um, 11, paragraph 11.20 we make the submission that the AVL reports also accord with all the entries in the occurrence books in paragraph 11.21 we mention that uh, on his own version the statement by accused number 2 to Mrs. Cronier was signed before uh, he was uh, assaulted we therefore submit that it was not prompted by any assault on his own version as according to him the assault happened um, afterwards then paragraph 11.22 accused number 2 says Sergeant Mukhani did not assault him and instead intervened when other members assaulted him so according to him Sergeant Mukhani was good to him and thus had no reason to fabricate evidence. It is therefore submitted that there is no reason to doubt his evidence when he testified that the um, accused were not assaulted. Now, he testifies that Sergeant Mohano did not give him a piece of the, <laughs> the Kentucky chicken. <laughs> they ate it alone. Well, good uh, man, Mukhan. Yes, uh, obviously, Sergeant Mukhan refuted that. And well, just to demonstrate that accused number two was on good terms with uh, Sergeant Mukhan, he testified that accused two told him that uh, he can dance, he can do the dance, and lift his foot up to uh, his neck. Mm -hmm. And um, accused number two, when he testified, um, he said that is his passion. Um, you know, as, 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 he, as he put it and another surprising fact was when Sergeant Mohan was testifying she constantly referred to um, accused number one um, by his first name um, Muzi he kept, she kept on saying Muzi um, we submit, my Lord, that shows that there were really cordial relations between um, the investigating team and, 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 and the accused. Um, par paragraph um, 11.23, which is our last submission. Um, as for the admissibility of the occurrence books, um, we um, we, we, we mentioned, uh, my Lord, that Exhibit MM was, uh, I'm sorry, Exhibit NN was handed by agreement between um, the state and Mr. Mgomezolo, and we refer to the um, relevant uh, passage. Accused number one informed the magistrates uh, at Tembisa on the 10th of uh, July 2020, um, as per Exhibit OO, the extract of the occurrence books from Silverton Police Station, um, that um, he was assaulted. The note that the magistrate made was that the accused is being assaulted by SAPD Silverton. Um, we've handed in uh, Exhibit NN1, which is the extract of the occurrence book from Silverton Police Station, Exhibit NN2, the cell register from uh, Silverton, and both indicate that uh, there were no injuries. Then, um, just finally on page 50, we, um, as far as the admissibility of uh, the um, 
of parents' books and the cell registers are concerned, we mentioned that um, they have been authenticated by Sergeant Mukhani and Surgeon Mohola as they were made in their presence and, and they were countersigned and, and they countersigned those entries. And I see in their heads Mr. Ramosipili doesn't really make any issue um, regarding the, um, the, 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 uh, the occurrence books. Uh, we then refer to the case of State versus Mpumlo and others, 1987, Volume 2, SA 442, where in the court held that uh, um, the church office occurrence books, cell registers, police occurrence books uh, were all held to be uh, official documents in terms of Section 234 of the Criminal Procedure Act. The court held that such documents must be accepted without reservation. And, my Lord, we submitted that was the whole purpose of uh, um, Section 234, the official document. Um, it, 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 it could never have been the intention that um, every time when an official document is, um, comes up for discussion that all the people um, who made entries should come um, and, and testify. Um, that will hamstring uh, the service uh, uh, delivery at those uh, police stations. Um, at 451 of the judgment, uh, Judge uh, uh, Mullins held as follows, and we quote, I am of course in this judgment not concerned with the truth of the contents of such documents that is now the church office occurrence books, cell registers, police occurrence books, says in most cases presumably the contents thereof will be accepted at face value and be common cause. The mere production of such official documents or certified copy thereof is, however, proof of the entry having been made. In other words, the mere production of an official document or certified copy thereof is proof of its authenticity but not necessary of the truth of its contents. Uh, this aspect has become much my lot in, in, in light of the fact that um, it's conceded on behalf of uh, accused um, number two that, um, that the uh, in fact on both accused that the um, there were no visible injuries. Um, Has it been conceded? I thought, uh, well, maybe Mr. Mr. Mnishi was making submissions, remember? Maybe. After the state's no. defense case was told that uh, he wants this court to make a record of the fact that all those entries in the OBs and the contents of the OBs, yes. there is no admission by the defense that uh, yes. those entries and what is written in those registers or cell books yes, attains to the veracity of yes. them being truthful or correct. Yes. Remember? Yes, I, I remember that, my lord, but what we are saying that the aspect has now become moot in light of what the defense submits in paragraph 6.27 of their heads. What are they saying? That the probabilities, probabilities are that the perpetrators of the assault use techniques that were designed to leave no visible marks. Um, it is not like the perpetrators were involved in any legal action. The police are aware that assault and torture are illegal, and if they engage in such conduct, they would be careful to conceal their crime and leave no visible injuries. In any event, Achis one did not claim that the assault had left any such marks or injuries. Um, we therefore submit, my Lord, that um, the, um, the defense is um, here um, stating that Accused One had no injuries as reflected in the um, occurrence yeah. books. Are they admitting that? Well, well the <laughs> because the way they, I read they, it, they, they are not. They are not facing it in this field, my lord. Uh, no, no, the way I read it, yes. 
remember the, the refrain was uh, we were never asked yes when you came to be booked in by Mo- mm-hmm. Mabena and Mohan Mohan would be the first one to go through the service sector of the police station and go right up to the cells to go and check whether they were, according to accused number yes, two, yes. there were pillows, there were blankets, or there were sponges, and you'd come with a key and take over the duties of the staff of the cell. He would be the one who locks them in, locks him in. The yes. same process would happen the following day. So that in other words, the assumption this court is asked to make is that Mohano and Mabena took over the duties of uh, the persons who were in charge of uh, the strict order which had to obtain yes. at the cells. Yes. Because according to accused number two's evidence, if I, when I went over it, they did nothing, the other guys there. It's Mohano who was yes. busy locking them in, locking them out. Yes, but and obviously, by implication also, what was recorded there must have come from Mohan. Yes, but... Yeah. That's how I, I have read it. Yes, uh, I don't think that version was ever put to, 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 to Sergeant Mohan. No, it was never put, but I'm saying... For him to comment. Yeah. Yes. But, you, you because know. it just struck me that uh, when uh, Colonel Sonepul was testifying about the directives which they have to traverse when cell visits are made. If there are incidents, the recording of those incidents, etc., etc., if there are problems, the laying of charges, etc., etc., it would be very surprising, I mean, really, that uh, Mohanu would accept the responsibility of running the cells. But more surprising would be the staff at the... Yes, the respective police stations. Yeah. To let Mohanu do whatever he wants, and if there are problems, who's responsible? Yes, and, and, and uh, I mean, how would he have obtained the keys, you know, to the cells? Um, the, the version, my lord, okay. we submit is, uh, is, is, is improbable. But coming back to the, um, to the occurrence books, um, as, as indicated, specifically as far as exhibit NN is concerned, it was handed to NN, by, yeah? Yes, NN, by agreement between the state and Mr. Mgumezul. And, and Mr. Mgumezul. Then, uh, my lord, in paragraph 11.24, we deal with the presence of uh, Mr. Mjiako. Um, we respectfully submit that uh, it has been abundantly demonstrated that accused number two held him out as his legal representative. He introduced him to Brigadier Gininda on the 23rd of May 2020 at Mood Police Station. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, June, my lord, 23 June. Thank you. 23 June 2020. 24. 23 June? Yes, 23 June. Yeah, okay. The day before the uh, confession. Oh, yeah. At Pretoria Mood Police Station. And he handed him Exhibit YY, proving his enrollment with the LPC. He was present the next day when accused number two made a confession to Ms. Corinier. And accused number two confirmed that he is his legal representative to both Sergeant Mohani and Mrs. Corinier. Uh, hence, Ms. Cronier took down he, his details as well as the Fidelity Fund certificate number. He appeared for the accused in Peking and box Magistrate Court as per exhibits RR and RR1. Um, he also confirmed on record at the box Magistrate Court that he appears for the accused. Um, as per exhibit EE in brackets 1, lines 20 to 24, and the accused did not refute that. Um, 
paragraph 11.25. It is submitted that the confession to Ms. Cronier, Exhibit JJ, by case number 2, in the presence of his lawyer, be admitted without further ado, as Mr. Mdiago would have raised any objection if there was uh, anything to what? Paragraph 11.6. We submit, my Lord, that the, uh, the version of the accused is riddled with uh, contradictions and it is so improbable that it ought to be rejected and that the um, statements in question be ruled admissible. <coughs> and this is almost um, it's 24 after 3. Uh, it's almost the time. 24 after 3, we, um, we, we have uh, concluded the submissions. We just want to check if there's anything further, um, and we, we will then finalize our submissions tomorrow morning. Okay. Uh, then tomorrow, the interpreter will start by interpreting your hits for the gentleman. And there are we may continue. Okay, sir. As a practice. I suggest you take them home. <laughs> yes. So that you study them. I'll have to cross my yeah. Matos, I know my nothing and only a man do fifty page. So put him in an animal of an official salad to get a one nine number and sound. Okay, the court will adjourn until tomorrow. All right.